some of the main concerns and questions that people have is just not understanding what they can expect. Um, for patients who we expect them to have a rash, how profound it's going to look, how it's going to affect their presentation to the world. That's one component. The other thing that people are very concerned about is affecting functioning, like their patients who have more of a hand-foot toxicity. Their concern is, well, you know, if, there's a, if they're a runner, and we try to take that into account, how active they are and how we're going to help offset these side effects so that they could maintain their level of function. For certain classes of drugs, we are consulted uh, prior to patients initiating therapy. Uh, and for others, we're, we're called when patients have a, a significant side effect that our colleagues are having difficulty managing, um, or when a patient is not following the textbook or the review article um, and are developing side effects that are confusing. It's really just most important that you uh, talk to your oncologist at the first sign of developing any side effect of the skin, the hair, or the nails. What I have found uh, frequently is that patients are afraid. They're afraid to share that they're having the side effect because they don't want their doctor to interrupt their treatment. They know that they're on this treatment because it's going to save their life. And so I've found many patients will minimize their side effects until it becomes very significant um, and then it's a little bit harder to get under control. EGFR inhibitors are drugs designed to inhibit the function of the thelial growth factor receptor present in cancer cells but also present in normal cells. This receptor stimulates unrestricted cell uh, replication in cancer cells. There are two main types of EGFR inhibitors, monoclonal antibodies and small tyrosine kinase inhibitor molecules. Skin-related uh, side effects are very common among patients treated with EGFR inhibitors, and 10 to 20% will suffer severe skin-related side effects. Ideally, for certain classes of drugs like uh, EGFR inhibitors or um, multi-kinase inhibitors that can cause significant toxicities of the hands and feet. Um, if an oncologist is not entirely comfortable with how best to prevent those side effects, uh, we would prefer to meet the patient up front. Um, if that's not possible, sort of getting an appointment on the books, uh, particularly for folks who are at high risk for developing a side effect um, or who have previously developed a side effect, uh, can be very helpful. One of the things that we do automatically before we even start a patient on the medication is that we start them with the supportive meds. I think starting them on the antibiotics and the topicals early has made a profound difference than when we were doing it later in the game. One of the side effects we see quite commonly uh, with EGFR inhibitors is actually what we call trichomegaly, or the eyelashes grow very long. And at first people are, are excited by that. They think that they look nice, um, but they continue to grow. And I've measured some patients who have eyelashes that are more than an inch or an inch and a half long. They curl and they scratch the cornea. They can actually lead to corneal scarring. Um, and so they are tremendously problematic. And so we help our patients by trimming them, or we encourage them to ask their barber or their hair salon or um, their ophthalmologist, anyone who's willing, uh, their wife, their husband, their partner, uh, to go ahead and, and keep the eye, eyelashes short so that they don't uh, curl in and cause corneal scarring. Patients may develop hair loss. So when the hair follicle itself gets inflamed, then they, the hairs have a, a hard time hanging on. Um, and so the scalp may thin, the beard may thin. Um, I've seen patients have inflammation of each and every hair follicle of their eyebrows, which is itchy and annoying and then leads to the eyebrows thinning. We're only beginning to understand uh, exactly what's going on at the molecular level uh, so that we can try to, to work on that. Because I do think it's more than a cosmetic issue. It's a privacy issue, it's a, it's a medical issue when you have secondary infection, um, and it's, a, it's an, an eye issue for sure if you're leading to corneal scarring and uh, decreased vision. There is another problem that we see a lot in patients on EGFR inhibitors when they're on it for a long time, so a later side effect. Um, and that tends to be issues um, of fissuring on the fingertips, can be on the heels or on the toes, and it basically feels like, you know, a thousand paper cuts. Patients' fingertips are uh, horrifically painful. Um, so it's actually an inflammatory problem or a problem with inflammation, and so we do recommend that patients treat it as such with, you know, topical steroids to try to reduce inflammation when possible. Um, and then beyond that, I find if you have a fissure and it's stinging and hurting, um, using a skin glue actually within the fissure can, can make the quality of life so much better. Try to find uh, medical grade skin glues whenever possible, uh, and there are some brands that are available over the counter that are thicker than others, uh, so it's a bit of trial and error for the patient, but many of these are only four or five dollars, so they can have a, a, a great improvement on quality of life just by sticking a little glue in that fissure before you need to use your 
uh, your hands or your feet. Hand foot skin reaction is a very common side effect from um, targeted therapies, particularly those that are called multi-kinase inhibitors, uh, so drugs that hit uh, a few different uh, cellular proteins. And it is a what we call a dose-limiting uh, toxicity from several specific drugs and drug classes. It presents in patients as these really painful, um, tender, callus-like areas over points of friction. So, you know, anywhere where you would think you might develop a callus from prolonged running or from excessive activity, um, it happens with even minimal, uh, minimal activity. So it's, um, it can lead to significant blistering. Uh, it can affect your ability to use your, your hands easily or to button or unbutton your shirt. Um, it happens most commonly in patients who do repetitive uh, activities or repetitive um, exercises with their hands or feet. So I've had patients who are chefs and so their fingertips are, are very uh, inflamed and get calluses and blisters on the tips of their fingers on one hand or the hand that they tend to hold their pan on the other hand, cyclists, um, shoveling, raking, anything that causes repetitive friction uh, over and over again can lead to these calluses that are surrounded by redness and, and blisters and can be extremely painful and lead to skin bake breakdown. The hand foot skin reaction tends to occur within the first few weeks of being on one of these targeted therapies. It usually persists as long as you are on the drug, but as soon as you stop the drug, the skin begins to heal. The vast majority of our patients in the metastatic or the stage three or four cancer setting uh, need to stay on therapy. You know, we're treating cancer as a chronic disease. And so having a side effect that impairs your ability to walk or wear certain shoes or use your hands for daily activities is incredibly impactful on quality of life. And my goal is always to keep patients uh, at whatever dose their oncologist thinks they need for their cancer um, until their cancer progresses on that targeted therapy and to, to never have the skin side effect on the hands and feet be the reason you have to come off therapy. So we are far from that. Um, these, this, the hand foot skin reaction continues to be a reason that patients need to reduce their dose uh, or to stop uh, their targeted therapy. When we talk about targeted therapies and hand foot skin reaction, the way that I counsel my patients um, is that you should consider going for a long walk the same as one would consider running a marathon. And so the prevention recommendations that we make are to use, you know, gentle skin care. Your doctor or your provider may recommend urea-based creams to try to prevent the thickening of the skin. Um, but something as simple as wearing uh, well-fitting shoes that have a wide toe box so that your toes aren't crunched together. You know, think about high heels. They just smush your toes together. You're adding pressure where we don't want pressure. Um, so wide toe box, well-fitting shoes. I also recommend um, athletic socks rather than cotton socks. So if you think about it, you're gonna go run a marathon, nobody runs a marathon in cotton socks. That leads to blisters. Um, so wearing sort of wick away or wool, some sort of technical um, athletic sock can be really helpful. Because heat and friction make side effects of the hands and feet worse, things like um, pedicures where you're getting uh, pumice stoning or they're filing, I do recommend against them. So you can get a pedicure, uh, as long as we're not cutting the cuticles, disrupting the skin barrier, and filing. So I would not try to file down your own uh, calluses from hand foot skin reaction because it makes the problem worse. It's a vicious cycle. That's adding friction. We need to reduce friction to keep the skin side effect under control. The most common side effect from EGFR inhibitor is popular pustular or acneform rash. It usually develops uh, in sebohaic areas of the body, such as the face, the scalp, the neck, and the upper trunk. The rash consists of multiple small lesions that resemble common acne. The concept of constantly picking at your skin, scratching at your skin, even if you're not the type of person that does that, when you have these rashes or you have these like low level or and even sometimes grade two, grade three toxicities, um, it's hard to not. If you have the toxicity and you're scratching and picking at your skin, you're leaving your skin open and that's likely going to cause some level of infection or super infection. A lot of the times if it's gotten that profound, we will hold the drug, just kind of let things cool down. We've had to modify the oral antibiotics. We've had to sometimes add additional topicals, but if it becomes that profound, the biggest concern is leading to an infection, and usually we might just hold for a cycle 
and just let things cool down and just re restart again. It's usually very rapid and patients commonly de detect its presence within the first two weeks of, of therapy. Interestingly, while skin-related toxicities increase treatment costs and may significantly interfere with patients' quality of life, there is well-documented scientific evidence that patients experiencing rash, especially rash that interferes with daily activities, are more likely to attain reductions in tumor size and live longer. Hand foot syndrome is a particular side effect of the hands and feet that I view as very distinct from hand foot skin reaction. It has a bunch of different names, uh, palmal plantar erythrodysesthesia or PPE is probably the most common one um, that most people use. And it is a side effect that we um, see from traditional cytotoxic chemotherapy. So uh, it may be caused by your 5-fluorouracil um, and uh, it looks different than hand foot skin reaction in that rather than getting those painful calluses with redness and blistering um, that we see with targeted therapies, uh, patients develop symmetric redness, tingling. Um, usually there's a little bit of tingling that comes before some swelling on the hands and feet. It can also occur early within uh, two to four weeks of, of getting cytotoxic chemotherapy, but the, the appearance of it is different. Um, and it, you don't get that same level of um, extra skin or hyperkeratosis with callus formation that you see with hand-foot skin reaction. Almost all targeted therapies used in cancer um, have the phenomenon of causing what we call photosensitivity. And this can be severe uh, and you can develop sun sensitivity with minimal exposure. You should maintain as much activity as you can, but to be very mindful of being out in the sun and making sure that you're using sunscreen and sunblock. Photosensitivity um, is thought to be due to UVA, so a particular wavelength of ultraviolet light. And what's critical about that is it can actually penetrate window glass. And so, not all window glass, but some. And so just making it a habit of using that broad spectrum high SPF sunscreen every morning uh, can actually be really helpful uh, so that you don't accidentally stand outside for five minutes too long while getting your mail and talking to your neighbor or accidentally sitting next to a window where UVA is, uh, is getting through. Before treatment with EGFR inhibitors is initiated, some preventive measures should be implemented. Patients should be advised to use antiseptic containing uh, soaps daily, to use skin moisturizers many times during the day, to avoid alcohol-based skincare products as they may worsen dry skin, to use comfortable shoes to cover periungo skin with petrolatum, and to avoid manicures and pedicures. And importantly, patients should be instructed to inform their doctors about the development of any skin-related toxicity as soon as possible as prompt treatment increases the chance to adequately control the symptoms. The out-of-pocket cost to a patient depends on their insurance, uh, depends on where they're uh, being evaluated, it depends on what country they live in. Um, it's, it's very difficult uh, to quantify for any individual patient. We do know, however, that the out-of-pocket costs for dealing with skin side effects from targeted therapies can be considerable. It's really critical to be aware of the things you can do to prevent the side effect in the first place. The inexpensive things that are over the counter like moisturizers and sunscreen and low potency topical steroids can actually have a huge impact on um, decreasing the likelihood of developing a significant toxicity. So I just try really hard with each patient to tell them there are many options um, that are similar uh, when I'm describing this uh, management plan for you. And so if you show up at the pharmacy and they tell you it's a $1,600 copay for a tube of cream, um, go ahead and call us back and we might be able to come up with one that um, has better coverage on your insurance. If you're just talking about creams for your skin, we always recommend anything that's a cream. So the simplest thing is anything that's in a tub or a jar, nothing that's in a bottle because that's lotion, that's water-based, that's not going to give you that you need almost like an emollient, something that's going to adhere to the skin. So Eucerin, Aquaphor, CeraVe, Cetaphil, Cetaphil those are, are heavier creams. They're emollients, they trap in the moisture. The other thing that's very important is to ensure that you're not taking hot showers or hot baths because that dries out the skin anymore. I know it's hard to tell someone to go stand in a lukewarm shower, but that's the best thing. You put the creams on immediately out of the shower so that your skin 
can absorb it. So that those are usually the ones that we would recommend to you. With your mustache, I would like you to wait to see a couple of treatments to see how, if anything, the rash is going, how profound it's going to be, if at all. And then, so how often do you shave? And then I would kind of want you to wait to see what happens before we have you shave. And then we have to ensure that where you're going is making sure that it's not gonna do anything to irritate the skin. So usually we want you to wait and see a couple of cycles or a couple of treatments to see what's happening to your skin before you do anything. With regards to a pedicure, what we always recommend is to go to a podiatrist and have them take care of your feet and do it that way as opposed to, again, going to a nail salon where we cannot ensure that it's going to be a sterile clean or as clean as possible procedure. At this point, we tell you to take your acrylics off, whatever um, nail extensions you have, just because the porosity of your nail it can change and we don't want anything to block it. We don't wanna, we don't wanna add anything or have you add anything that could put you at more risk for an infection. We as physicians and providers all come at this with a different expertise and everyone has the patient's best interest in mind, but we all have different tools. And so simply, you know, telling your provider, your doctor, that you have a problem, that you have a rash, taking your shirt off and showing them the rash um, can, can change the trajectory of your, of your treatment. Asking early uh, for help, suggesting uh, maybe that uh, you, you uh, see a dermatologist if you feel like your skin is just driving you crazy uh, and you're not getting anywhere. I think you know, we all need to work together uh, as, as teams. Whatever the problem is that you're having, tell your doctor about it, tell them early, uh, and don't be afraid to ask for extra help.